And now I'm back. Um, so we're going to deal now with lesson number two, with, uh, which talks about the literary forms. So let's start now. So here at lesson number two, we're going to be dealing with literary forms. Specifically, these are the topics to be learned in this lesson. First, what are the forms of literature? Second, what are the forms of prose? Third, what are the elements of short story? Fourth is about what are the literary techniques? So let's start with the forms of literature. Um, in terms of forms of literature, we do have two forms of literature. It's either prose or poetry. When we talk about prose, this is mainly ascribed to be composed freely. This form does not have any measurement seen for it's known to have a free flow sentences. Also, it has great irregularity and the language used in this form is ordinary for it has a close resemblance to man's pattern of everyday speech. So in short, when we talk about prose, um, usually it is written in sentences. So the examples of this are essays, short stories, novels. So as you see, they are mainly and writ was written into paragraph forms. So the techniques into the prose are more of how it was written or how this the story goes or like um, also in terms of narration so it's more of storytelling so that's prose or it's more of explaining so that's prose unlike with poetry when we talk about poetry this is characterized by its highly controlled manner of choosing and arranging language with the use of regulating devices such for sound and rhythm to aesthetically convey meaning which may call for a specific emotional response. So in short, when you talk about poetry, it is written in stanzas or written in lines or verses and they are very particular with sound and rhythm. So some poetry, are, uh, they do have uh, measurement well, some they don't have, wherein they, we call them as free verse. So here at Poetry, um, it's a different thing with prose because here at Poetry, you need to think beyond about the symbolism of a certain word. Unlike with prose, prose is like what you see is what you get. What's the meaning is that's it. So unlike with Poetry, that one word can be interpreted with lots of meaning through figurative languages. So that's it for prose and poetry. So let's now move on to the forms of prose. So these are the forms of prose. We do have prose fiction or the non and also we do have the nonfiction prose. Pro prose fiction is basically more of imagining stories or imagining events. So prose writing differs from poetry because it does not depend on verses, meters, or rhymes for its organization and presentation. Um, the examples of prose fiction is about are novels, short stories, um, other literary works. Uh, what else? Uh, more of uh, stories that recount life. So that's it for prose fiction. But this is not into uh, life. Uh, it is into life based, but not all stories from the prose fiction are true because they are just imagined events. But these imagined events are based on true to life stories. Okay. So, but it doesn't mean that it really happened. Okay. Next one is a nonfiction prose. Nonfiction prose is basically it attempts to present or to interpret or to describe facts such judgment, opinions, and commentaries, which may be framed and expressed in forms of essays, feature articles, editorial, and the like. So, in short, here at nonfiction prose, this is more of true to be, true to life, um, based on true stories, based on true explanations. In short. These nonfiction prose, um, they try to gather evidences and they try to refer this, at, they try to refer information that can be put into the essays, feature articles, and tutorials, and the like to make the, the information really, uh, what's this, true and at the same time believable because it really happened. 
So basically, prose and nonfiction prose, they are opposites. Okay? So prose fiction, it is an, just an imagine, uh, imagined events. The nonfiction prose, this is true to life. Okay? So next one, we do have also forms of fiction. These are forms of fiction like the short story, novella, novel. Short story, this is basically a short story, meaning this can be read in one sitting. While for the novella, this is the shorter version of novel. So I know you're very familiar with novel that novel really uh, doesn't require or it requires you like four days, five days to finish the story because this is a long prose narrative that deals with a human experience through a relative sequence of events. It presents a circumstances that may involve a number of characters or it may have also series of episodes and it's known to be, you know, very complex. So like what you have with Twilight or other novel stories that has sequence. So novels are very uh, what's this? Um, famous with in terms of the genre of romances. Okay? So those are the forms of fiction. Now let's now move on with the elements of short story. Elements of short story, you know, it is very important because without the elements of short story, it cannot be called short story. Since uh, the absence of one makes it incomplete, okay? So these are the, uh, uh, the elements of short story, and I know you're very familiar with that. We were in the first one is about setting that talks about place, time, weather condition, social condition, mood or atmosphere. So I will not be talking about it anymore because I know you're very familiar with setting. Setting is basically the environment of how the story happened. So that's setting. Second one is about plot. Plot is basically... Uh, the arrangement of the story from the introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, and denoma. So, as you see, um, plot may vary um, depending on the style of the author. And you may also see that one into the movies that you're watching that the plot started with the climax or whatsoever, or, or we have what we call the flashback. So, that's it. So, when we talk about plot, again, this is the sequence of events in a story or play. Okay? So, uh, introduction, rising action, climax, falling action, denoma, and the resolution of stories are very important for you to understand so that it will be easy for you to retell the story. Okay? Next one is about conflict. To understand it further, conflict is basically in our term like it is the struggle. It is the problem within the story. Conflict is essential to a plot. So parang sa buhay yan, kailangan may problema tayo to, put, to spice the story. Kasi kung if there's no conflict within the story, the story is dull. The story is boring. Okay? So parang pag kumain ka ng isang food, na kapag walang spice and walang kick or yung yung bang ano to um, something that will stand out to the taste definitely the food is boring nakakasawa siya so conflict is essential to a plot because without conflict there is no plot it is the opposition of forces which ties one incident to another and make you know and makes the plot move Conflict is not merely limited to open argument, rather it is any form for opposition that faces the main character. Within a short story, there may be only one central struggle or there may be one dominant struggle. So with many minor ones. So for example, um, if someone asks, what is the story all about? Ah, the conflict is about politics or the conflict is about two people having uh, a problem with culture like that. O kaya the, the conflict of the of the story is about powers. So that's conflict. Definitely, when we try to look into a certain story, there is a main conflict. There may be minor conflicts, but that's not the focus of the story. Next one is about another element of story is 
character. So character, this can be defined as any person, animal, or figure represented in a literary work. So we do have different types of character. We do have what we call protagonist, antagonist, static or flat character, dynamic character. Protagonist is basically to make it, to, to, for, to, for you to understand it further, this is what we call bida sa storia. So what we mean by bida, this is the main character. So most of the story, you, all, you will always see that main character or that lead character because uh, the story surrounds him, okay? So, parang yan sa buhay. Uh, sa buhay natin, like me, I am the lead character of my own story. You, you are the lead character of your own star story. So, you're the protagonist. Well, for the antagonist, basically, these are your villain character. The one who puts you into a problem or the one who opposes you with certain things. So that's antagonist. In short, they are the contrabida into your life or into a story. Next one is a static or flat character. Static or flat character, basically this is a character that does not change the course of the story. The qualities and the characteristic of a certain character remain as is. So static character ay basically yung mga characters sa atin sa isang pelikula na na vendor siya from the very beginning until the end vendor pa rin siya o kaya ay um, yung attitude niya hindi na bago from the very beginning up to the end so that's static or flat okay while for the dynamic character is about the character undergoes significant changes in personality behavior perspective etc as story develops in short Yung um, dynamic character are the characters that change from the start and then up to the end. Ah, ah, the character that uh, change when it's already ending. I mean, the, the attitude, the personality, the perspective of life, like that. So that's the dynamic character. So next one is about theme. Theme is basically what we call the central idea. What is the story all about? So, for example, when you are asked by your teacher, like, what's the story all, what, what is the theme of the stories? Like, um, love conquers all. When you put some quotation into a certain story and the story revolves within that quotation, that's the theme or that's the central idea of the story. So, the theme in a piece of fiction, it is the controlling idea or its central insight. It is the author's underlying meaning or main idea that he is trying to convey. The theme may be the author's thoughts about a topic or a view of human nature. The title of the story uh, usually points to what the writer is saying, and he may use various figures of speech to emphasize his theme, such as symbol, allusion, simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or irony. So that's the that's the theme. So that's the central idea, and also. When we talk about the theme, you can also identify already what genre of the story is it. Next one for the elements of the short story is about symbols. Symbols are basically the props or the object um, used to represent ideas aside from its literal meaning. Or if it's into the story like uh, apple, what does it symbolize? The golden apple, what does it symbolize for a certain story? So that's symbolism. Okay, so they are objects, but they are not just merely objects because they have representation and they have meaning out of it. Next one is point of view. Point of view refers to the advantage point as to how the story unfold. Um, you look into what pronoun did the writer use into a certain story. If the writer used like I my so definitely that's first person but if you try to look into second person um it's about you if it's an essay or if it's a, a certain story and the author uses the pronoun you yours like that that's second person but if it is a third person um the writer uses the the he she they or uh, not directly per, uh, pertaining to a certain person or a certain concept. So like the, 
society, like that. So that's third person. So they are very important to understand the point of view so that you will know who is speaking into the story. So if, if it's I, definitely the author is speaking into the story. If it's he or she or they or whatsoever, definitely there's, um, they're just talking about or you will not see the bias or the subjective opinion of the author. Okay? So that's point of view. So let's now move on to literary techniques. Literary techniques are very important into understanding a literary text. Why? Um, it is very important because uh, for you to understand the style of the author and for you to understand the flow of the story and for you to understand also how the author molds the story okay because if you don't have the background of literary techniques you will never understand why is it the author used that kind of plot or that kind of words or that kind of symbolism so that's literary techniques so literary techniques are basically devices refer to specific methods writers employ in their works to convey messages Readers, on the other hand, look for several literary techniques when examining or analyzing a text or simply evaluating a text's artistic value. So, writers make use of literary techniques or devices to convey messages or to simply add an artistic value to a text. So, let's have first the first literary technique, which is about anapora. Anapora is sometimes called epanapora, which is about the repetition of word. So, repetition of a word or a phrase at the beginning of a sentence to create an artistic or heightened effect. So, like for example, this one, every day, every night, every way, and my life, my life, my life. So, that's a technique of an author. So, the use of repetition of words to highlight the meaning and to highlight the story and to highlight the intensity. Okay. Next one is about anti-hero. Anti-hero is a fictional character who does not possess the traits such as pride and valor expected of a hero. Often, anti-heroes are portrayed as foolish and usually find themselves in mischief. So, most of like young anti-hero are those um, more of into the mischief a situation so for example the i am robot na at the end of the day uh mawawala pa rin yung kanyang pagka robot or the bumblebees if i am detective if i am detective pikachu i must also bees bumblebees and together become robot by nick evangeline root hope by june 2019 okay so um as what i have told you they have or do not possess the traits Expected of a hero, but at the end of the day, mamamatay pa rin sila. That's anti-hero. Next one is cliffhanger. Cliffhanger is, this is a literary technique used by the author to arouse curiosity. So, among readers, by ending a chapter or story abruptly, most of the time the characters are confronted with difficult or unsettling situation instead of providing a resolution. The author would end it. So, when we talk about cliffhanger, the story is hanging, okay? So, usually, most of the time, the one or stories that has cliffhanging or cliffhanger is about there's another episode, episode to watch. So, hinahang nila. Yun. Or there are some stories naman na talagang they, they leave it as hanging. So, for example, of that one is, um, it was first truly successful prime time use of cliffhanger to keep fans talking all summer. So, ma'am, alin po dyan ang cliffhanger? Ang cliffhanger dyan is about uh, yung, ano to, yung, we have what we call in linguistic the ellipses. So, that's hanging. So you you make the reader uh, put some ideas into the poem 
or into the sentences. So that, uh, the, so in short, the reader supply what will happen next, okay? So next one is juxtaposition. Juxtaposition is a technique authors in you, uh, use in their works to compare two different things or two contrasting ideas. So in case of this example, is about all fair in love and war. What is the oppo uh, opposition, what is the opposing ideas here? The two contrasting ideas here is about the love and war. So when we talk about love, I know you know that one. Love is about positive, while war is about negative. So they are two different things and two contrasting ideas. So just that's juxtaposition. Next one is about foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is about um, there are already ideas or spoilers already of what will happen to the next, okay? So there are also, sometimes the writers put, or put the foreshadowing into symbolism. Like for example, if it's a horror movie, they will, you will see like uh, red, blood, fire, or the sound itself. So that's foreshadowing. So, but uh, when writers use this technique, especially, especially in mystery or thriller novels, they provide red herrings, misleading or false clues to divert the reader's expectation. So, another one is, example of this one is in a Western movie, the good guy enters a bar, has a drink, and leaves. The bad guy scowls and spits on the floor. And, and you know, there is definitely more to come between them. So, uh, the previous event, will help you decide what will happen next. That's for shadowing. Next one is catharsis. Catharsis is um, derived from a Greek word, uh, catharsis, which means purification or purgation. It refers to the emotional release or cleansing of the characters or audience or readers from strong emotions usually brought by learning of the truth or when confronted with difficult situation. So this technique is commonly found in tragedies such as Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, and Sophocles, Oedipus the King. So the change of emotions and the change of, of uh, the attitude of the character usually is seen in two catharsis. So example of that also is the playing the piano is a catharsis for a tired, busy mother after a long day of work. Okay? So next one is stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness is sometimes referred to as interior monologue. This is a literary technique that is usually associated with modern writers. So the plot is developed based on the character's reminiscence or recollection of events and thought fragments. Instead of using dialogues to show the character's reaction or emotion, writers make use of stream of consciousness to show each character's complex nature. More so, readers are taken into the depths of the character's mind and witness how this character processes their thoughts when faced with a particular situation or emotion. Stream of consciousness is basically um, the writer, when you're reading, you have like the right, the, the, the character is speaking to himself already or giving some opinions of it. So that's stream of consciousness. So the example of this one is the excerpt from James Joy's novel, Ulysses. He is young Leopold as in retrospective arrangement, a mirror within a mirror. Hey, presto. So like that. So it, it is within the dialogue, but there is a something like stream of consciousness that they, it's like you are talking to yourself. Like that. So that's stream of consciousness. Next one is Hamarsha. Hamarsha is a tragic flow, um, a technique commonly found in Greek tragedies. It refers to the tragic hero's error in judgment, which leads to his or her downfall. So most of the time, this error is committed unknowingly, such in the case of Oedipus when he killed his father, Laius, and married his mother, Jocasta. So, ma'am, alin po dyan yung error in uh, judgment nung kay Oedipus? when he killed his father and married his mother. Usually kasi, pag, ano, pag mga Greek, um, uso dyan yung mga, ano ba yun? May tawag dun eh. Yung, ano to, yung minimary yung kapatid, uh, minimary yung bata, minimary yung matanda. So, uh, may tawag dun. Nasa 
tip of the tongue. Next time, siguro, into my next lesson, I'll be telling you. But um, the example also of Amartya or tragic flow here is about the Helen of Troy. I know you're very familiar with Helen of Troy, where in Helen is uh, the one or the reason why the Troy has fallen. Diba? Na in love si Helen kay Paris. Okay? So, kaya nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng war between Troy and Sparta. So, like that. So, anyway, you may watch that one, the other Greek stories or Greek tragedies into, into your Netflix or YouTube if you really want to know that one. So, the example of this also is about one of the countless politicians to be involved in an extramarital affair and in subsequent scandal. Bill Clinton's impeachment was one of the most public scandals today. So, it's like about how much is about what have you... Uh, the things that you have done leads to you to where you are right now. So, yung pagkabagsak mo or pagkaroon ng uh, pag, uh, yung downfall mo is because of your wrong judgment of a situation. Okay? So, that's Hamarsha. So, that's it for the uh, part one of literary forms and we still have few to go. So, I hope everyone, you learned something from it and try to recall what you have learned into your grade 11 and your junior high school. So, I hope you watch also the next part for you to learn it further. Okay? So, bye-bye everyone and have a nice day and don't forget to believe on what you need to believe and always pray and be happy and stay safe. Bye-bye, everyone.